So let's review archetypes and then we'll go into detail and give you some examples of each kind. Archetypes are recurring patterns of character, symbol, or situation that are found in mythology, religion, and stories of all cultures. Archetypes are embedded deep into humanity's collective unconscious. They teach us how to live under any circumstance. Humans didn't invent archetypes, but we definitely express them in our art, literature, and religion. The three categories, again, are situational archetypes, symbolic archetypes, and character archetypes. Let's look at some examples of, of the situational archetypes first. The quest is what the hero must accomplish in order to bring fertility back to the wasteland. It's usually a search for some talisman, which will restore peace, order, and normalcy to a troubled land. So there's Frodo from Lord of the Rings. He had a quest with the ring. The task is the nearly superhuman feat the hero must perform in order to accomplish his quest. Usually it's what he has to do to, um, to save the land when the fair lady prove one's rightful place. There's Robin Hood. He has to um, win the fair lady's hand that's made Marion with him. The initiation is when the adolescent or the hero comes into his maturity with new awareness and problems. It's, a, it's usually a rite of passage. It signifies adulthood. So Harry Potter had to go through many initiations in his journey to become an adult um, when he was at Hogwarts. The journey sends the hero in, some, in a search of some truth that will help save his kingdom. This is a picture of the Yellow Brick Road leading to the Emerald City. Dorothy, the heroine of the story, has to go on this journey to find the truth. Okay, and she goes through many, many parts of this journey in order to figure out, um, figure out the truth and save her people. Then we have a fall, which is a very, very common situational archetype, um, and that is a descent from a higher to a lower state of being, usually as a punishment for transgression. It involves a loss of innocence, and this is. A cartoon picture of Adam and Eve, they are the classic example of the fall, the first fall, and when they lost their innocence and they went from a state, a higher state to a lower state, um, a sin entered the world. And so that's the classic example there. We see that in a lot of literature. This put a star by it, death and rebirth. It's the most common of all situational archetypes. It shows the duality of the cycle of life and death, spring and winter. So morning and springtime, they represent birth, youth, rebirth, while evening and winter suggest old age or death. So there's a picture of Snow White. We know she died and then came back to life. Yes. The battle between good and evil, it's obviously this battle between two primal forces. And we like it when good triumphs over evil. We are just prone to do that. So um, this is a picture of Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader, good and evil, battling each other with lightsabers. Another situational archetype is called the unhealable wound. It's e either a physical or a psychological wound that cannot be fully healed. And this wound symbolizes the loss of innocence. Here's a picture of Harry Potter with his lightning scar that his enemy gave him. And it is a physical wound that has never healed and it symbolizes his, you know, connection with his um with his enemy and puts him on the path on his journey to um defeating evil. And then there's the ritual, which is always a ceremony that marks a rite of passage. Um, and an example is when a princess becomes a queen, and so there's the Little Mermaid. She becomes a, she leaves her underwater state with her fins and gets legs and becomes a queen. So it's an example of the ritual. Let's move on to symbolic archetypes. The magic weapon is a very common one, and it's just basically what the hero needs in order to complete the quest. Usually, no one else can wield the weapon; only the hero can. Um, make it work. So there's a picture of Dorothy wearing those red heels, magical red heels. Then there's light versus darkness. The light usually suggests hope, renewal, or intellectual illumination, while darkness implies the unknown, ignorance, and despair. And that's Voldemort, who is darkness, and Dumbledore representing light. 
Because water is necessary to life and growth, it commonly appears as a birth symbol, as baptism spiritualized. Baptism symbolizes a spiritual birth. So when you see rain, rivers, and oceans and things like that, uh, you should think, oh, that's an archetype or rebirth or birth. And the desert just suggests the opposite, like death or um, nothingness. There's a picture from space balls and they're exiled into the desert. <clears throat> Heaven versus hell. So um, anytime you see in a story or a movie, um, skies and mountains, and then you see the vowels of the earth or a hell type thing, and you should think the skies and the mountains belong to the gods, and the vowels and the pits of the world hide evil, things like that. There's a representation of um, the duality of those things. Then we have this one called Innate Wisdom versus Educated Stupidity, and you should think this street smarts versus book smarts. Um, one example is Harry Potter and Hermione. Harry Potter definitely has that instinctive intelligence. He just knows what to do. Whereas Hermione is more book smart. She always has to study and research to know what she knows. And so um, those are common in stories. And they're both useful. Haven versus wilderness. So this is where places of safety contrast sharply against a dangerous wilderness. So hero, heroes are often sheltered for a time to regain healthy resources. Spiritual or supernatural intervention is basically when spiritual beings intervene on the side of the hero or even sometimes against him. So that's a picture of the gods intervening. More symbolic archetypes. Um, fire, fire versus ice. Fire represents light, rebirth, knowledge, while ice is darkness, ignorance, and death. So there's the white witch from Narnia. She definitely represents that cold, ice. She's dark and evil. She represents the death of the land and things like that. This is a newer one, Nature versus Mechanistic World. It basically says that nature is good while technology is evil. It says that technology separates people from nature and is bad. So if you've ever seen Wally, -E, you know that we see this the world through Wally's -E eyes. And we see how technology has changed people and it's um, changed the way they've related to each other and taking care of the earth and things. Here are a couple more symbolic archetypes we won't go into too much depth in, but um, the crossroads, that's a, a time or place of decision when realization is made and change or penance results. Then there's the tower, which represents a strong place of evil, and it also represents the isolation of self. So think of Rapunzel, she's locked in the tower. Fog symbolizes uncertainty, and then colors usually mean something in stories. So red usually means blood, sacrifice, passion, disorder. Green represents growth, hope, fertility. White represents light, purity, innocence, things like that. And yellow represents enlightenment or wisdom. Those are some examples.